Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create this sunburst sort of shape in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to start with the default colors here. I want a black stroke and no fill at all. I'm going to the line tool, so I'm just going to click on it, hold the shift key as I draw a vertical line. I'm going to increase the stroke weight of this quite a bit and then go to the stroke panel here. I'm going to the profile. I'm going to set it to this triangular profile and because I want it the other way around I'm just going to click here to invert it. Now I only want this to be wavy so I'm going to the selection tool. I'll select over my line. I'll choose effect, distort and transform and then zigzag. I'm going to make it a smooth zigzag and now I can adjust the size which is going to be the amount of wiggle that's on this line. I don't want too much so I think that probably around 8 is just fine and then ridges per segment is how many bumps we've got. So I'm going to bring mine down to about 3. But you can adjust yours to suit. I'll click OK. So this is the line that's going to make my sun at this point. If I want to make it a bit wider at the base, I can increase the stroke weight. Now to rotate it around, I don't want it to rotate around this point. I want it to rotate around a point which is about here. So I'm going to the pen tool. I'm going to set this this time to no fill, no stroke. And I'm just going to click once at approximately where I want my rotation point to be and I'm going to press the escape key. So this is an anchor point here that has no fill and no stroke, but it's going to make a really perfect point for rotating this shape. So I'm going to select both these objects, this line and this loose anchor point, and choose object and then group. To make the mathematics a little bit easier, I'm going to rotate this around and I'm going to rotate it in this direction because it just makes our angle a positive angle instead of a negative angle. So with it selected, we're going to Effect and then Distort and Transform and then Transform. We're going to experiment with what we need in terms of a transformation. We want to transform or rotate it around this point here. So I'm going to click of these nine boxes in the middle one on the left hand side and that makes this the rotation point. So we're going to determine roughly how many shapes we want. So I'm thinking that I probably want about 10. So that would be 180 divided by 10 because 180 is half a circle. So I'm just going to do that and then start increasing my number of copies to 10. So that's one original plus 10 copies and that finishes up the half shape. You might think that you only need 10 shapes in total, but you actually do need one more just to finish this sort of look. Now, if you want to make a full sun so it goes all the way around you're just going to continue to add extra shapes here so we would need 19 which is 19 copies plus the one original so there are 20 of them but I don't want that I just want mine to be quite a bit smaller so I'm going for 18 degrees 10 copies and I'm really happy with that so I'll click OK now at this point, if you're not happy with the exact shape you've got here, you can edit it. So what I'm doing is going to the direct selection tool. I'm going to locate this anchor point here. So that is the loose anchor point that we have. We've got this line and then we've got this anchor point. Well, if I select and move it, because this is a live effect, I can make my sun a bit bigger, but I could also make my sun quite a bit smaller. So it really is whatever you want it to be. So I'm just going to make mine look about like that. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to select now over everything, which is just the dot and this line because it's all got a transform effect on it. If we go to the appearance panel, you can see very clearly that this is the transform effect on this line and dot. So if I just click on it to show it, it's a transform effect. So if we want to bake this in and break these shapes out, what we're going to do is select this object and do object and then expand appearance. We'll go to the layers panel and just see what that gives us. So what we've got is a group and inside that are groups and groups and groups. So with everything still selected, I'm going to choose object and then ungroup and then do that again until ungroup is no longer an option. 
You can see that because we used that little anchor point as a no fill, no stroke one, it had no fill and no stroke. The process of expanding this and ungrouping has just totally destroyed those little dots. And there's not 11 dots left in here. In fact, there are no dots at all. So that's a really handy way of cleaning up the file by using that no fill, no stroke dot as your rotation point. So everything now is just a path. So this is a filled path. You can see that it's been expanded to a filled shape. So I can just grab everything and join them all together with the Pathfinder. So I'm going to the Pathfinder palette. You can choose Window and then Pathfinder. I'm just going to click here on Unite and that's given me my basic shape. I'm going to finish this off with a circle. So I'm just going to create a circle and just drop it into the middle here. I'm going to the Direct Selection tool I'm going to select over this anchor point here and just press the delete key. Then I'm going to join this with object path join, which will allow me to then grab the bottom of this line and just expand it downwards so that I've got a nice little sort of shape here. Now I can finesse that a little bit. I'm not going to bother too much at this point. You can do that yourself to just even things up. At this point, I would grab everything and just join them together again so that I've got this sun shape. So before we finish up, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to apply a gradient to this shape and then let's have a look at a couple of ways that we could actually use the shape in a document. In this case, I have my wiggly sun shape that has a gradient fill on it, placed it over the top corner of the document. My document is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels in size, so I'm going to make a rectangle a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. I'm going to line it up on the artboard here. We go to the align panel and just center it up on the artboard. We can give it a plain fill if we like. So what I could do is one of two things. Either I could use this as a clipping mask, so I could select this shape and the sun shape, right click and choose make clipping mask. But it's also possible to use this as a crop. So I'm going to select over both of these shapes. I'm going to the Pathfinder. I'm going to click here on crop. And what that does is it crops the shape so that all that we're left with is this wiggly sun shape in the exact right size to fit in the top corner of our document. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.